since Sacks Harbor turned into a hamlet, has it changed anything in the past to any? It has in, in that I think the governing of the community uh, is handled by the people themselves now with a lot less interference from the government. Uh, as well, the hamlet uh, as such now operates as a business rather than uh, a body that the government gives a handout to. And from that, they've been able to sort of scrape off a little bit of, of some of the, uh, the monies that, that go into hamlets on an annual basis. Uh, but I think that what it has given us in uh, this short amount of time is uh, a feeling of individuality again, where you're looking after your own and, and the people are, are looking at taking over more of the programs and getting more involved. But it's also brought um, the governing of the area uh, back to the people so that the people govern themselves and, and the people aren't necessarily governed by any outside force. Um, and Sachs Harbor, what is your job as uh, mayor here? Well, basically, you're elected, I guess, to uh, to help give direction towards the achieving what it is the, the people wish to achieve in, in terms of political development, uh, services to the town, and some of the programs run by the government, uh, as well working hand-in-hand -hand with government and, uh, and industry, um, if, if uh, they're at all in this area, which they haven't been. Uh, but basically to serve as, as someone to uh, act on behalf of the council to speak uh, Sachs Harbor's wishes. Uh, what is the population of Sachs and has it changed? It has changed in that uh, now and then you get a large family that moves. Um, I think a couple of years ago we had three uh, and that dropped our numbers to uh, below 170 but it basically hovers uh, about 100 and you know, 160 to 175. It's it's always been in that general area for the, quite a few number of years now. Like many places in the north, the land around Sachs has its own uniqueness. There are a good many animals to hunt for food, as well as for sports hunters. Although some people still trap around Sachs, it is not like it used to be. What did they really depend on for income? It was basically a trapping community and uh, still serves as that, at least up until a few years ago, where they switched over to starting to um, garnish the majority of their income from, uh, from some of the sport hunt programs. Sports hunters come here very often in the fall and winter to hunt either caribou, muskox, or polar bears. For a lot of the times, it is a combination hunt that they go on, where two guides take one hunter for caribou and muskox. Most often, they are very successful. You get a lot of sports hunters up here? It's been, it's been relatively good uh, and getting better. I think the word is out now and the standards uh, provided by the guides in terms of the service given to a lot of the uh, hunters who come up from wherever uh, is increased and that hospitality aspect is, uh, has sort of helped them to, uh, to get a lot more hunters. What kind of things go on in our regular work week here in Sachs Harbor? Well, I guess depending on the seasons and depending on the makeup of the population, uh, it varies. Uh, however, on a year-to-year -year basis, it, it usually runs about the same. Um, you have sort of the, the workforce that are constantly working in the community with the health and welfare of the RCMP and the Hamlet. And uh, they're on a, a continuous basis, although say in the summer season for the hamlet things pick up because that's your season to do road work and uh, and repairs within the community uh, as well that's when the uh, the contractors come in uh, to build whatever uh, and on a seasonal basis at that time everybody else is pretty well off doing uh, other things like like uh, going out sealing uh, in the fall time things gear up to preparing for the winter and to preparing for the the sport hunting season and uh, and the trapping for those that do uh, trapping and throughout the winter that stays uh, relatively the same. People get excited in the spring because of uh, of the change again uh, and as well we put a, a lot of emphasis um, in preparing for the summer from the hamlet perspective and the hunters and trappers uh, that's their big season for their hunts. So it's, it's sort of the same over uh, you know, uh, a yearly basis, but uh, 
with each change uh, from season to season, it provides a, a little bit of excitement within the community. The hotel in Saks is operated by Les Carpenter and Associates. It opened in April of 87 and can accommodate 26 people. The building was an atmospheric environment station which was used in the 50s. Now, as a hotel, the facility is being well used. We opened our doors for uh, business uh, on the 23rd of April, I believe, and caught the tail end of the sport hunting season and basically have been trying to stay open ever since. Uh, do you have um, groups that always come around and stay in the hotel? Well, we go out and try to uh, give an argument as to why they should be meeting up here, but it's, it's generally uh, all of those groups that, that uh, associate with the other communities. You have your, your tradespeople who come in on behalf of the government, uh, some of your government officials, and, and uh, some people who uh, are working for the newly organizations pass through. And uh, I guess it's, it's about the same as anybody else. The odd tourists, you know, they come up uh, depending on the time of the season, and we're trying to, uh, you know, stay open so that the sport hunters can take advantage of, uh, of the facility as well. When people come up to Saks to work, they usually have to stay for a long period of time, and that makes it good for the hotel. Now, what is the hotel meant to Saks Harbor as a whole? As a whole, it's pretty hard to gauge at this point in time as to, to what it has meant. Um, there have been three, four, maybe five people from the community who have uh, worked up at the, uh, the hill over the past number of months. And um, from what we've been able to, uh, to give out, hopefully they're pumping that back into the community as well as, as uh, when you have a larger facility, you can offer... Uh, accommodation to more people so that uh, hopefully the more people that come in can spin off and uh, and buy some of the furs that the trappers have or else they can visit the co-op and, and pick up some of the souvenirs that are there and and just generally give uh, them the opportunity uh, to see more of the community. Do you think the hotel will be a profitable business being this far north? Well, I'm hoping it will be. Uh, there are a number of things that we have yet to work on and uh, a number of markets that we have yet to tap. Uh, it's going to be a long, lengthy process, uh, but I'm confident, and I know with the uh, impetus that we have in, in going out and trying to get some of the extra business uh, in terms of tours, um, naturalists, um, an increase in, in the sport hunting, maybe the, the whole of the harvesting of muskox, and... Um, with the increased amount of, of um, political development or governing that's taken place from this community, we'll have occasion to, uh, to discuss more uh, with government and hopefully discuss it on our own turf. Uh, Lena Wilkie has been working with Muscox Wolf for the past few years. Over these years, she has had experience with the wolf or Kiviut and has had many customers. She has done exhibits when traveling, like in Expo 86, the NWT Pavilion. She has made such things as scarves, sweaters, hats, etc. And she sells them to small businesses or people from the south that have placed orders. The wool is taken from the hide by using a hair pick, thus leaving all the long hair. I'm carding it. Card it to be easy to spin. And I put it in a spinning wheel. Uh, and it's like this is lumpy. It's full of lump. It's, it's, um, it's when I spin it, it gets lumpy and it's not carded. But when I card it, it's nice and smooth to spin it. Here she has made several different colors. Even, uh, How do you get that color? Um, I pick up lichens, plants from the land in the summer. They match it. I, I simmer it slowly in the stove. Put that wool on it. Soak it for about in a really low heat, two hours. But you can boil it. Spinning the wool doesn't take too long for Lena. 
She has done it so often that she knows what a good job will bring her. With this machine, making a sweater cuts the time in half or even better. It's a great way to work and get something done fast. And it is easy to operate. I like it. Uh, I really enjoy working with it because uh, it's not hard work, it's easy work. I don't get tired when I work with it. Um, it's not like doing other work, it's easy and it's, it's good money too. Has, um, did the housing association change with that one? Uh, no, it didn't. It operates as a separate uh, association through the NWT Housing Corporation and through the regional office that they have in Anuvik. There is uh, an arrangement that we're trying to, to work out where perhaps we'll set up, uh, I guess, a non-profit housing association uh, here in the community to better reflect the needs of the community and, uh, and the needs of the people, whereby now uh, you live by the standards imposed uh, upon you by the housing corporation where uh, if it's operated as a community-based thing there's uh, a closer relationship with the people as well you can you can do a lot more things with uh, rent adjustments um, and just making sure that the standard of housing in the community is uh, a lot higher than elsewhere. Saks Harbor had a little store before they decided to get something bigger. This is the Saks Co-op. It was built in 1986, just before Christmas. It's a welcome addition to the hamlet in many ways. They handle a lot of things for the people, such as agent for the scheduled flights, gas, and above all, groceries and dry goods. It is a nice building and has enough space for their needs. People browse around inside looking at things and be being interested in souvenirs and other they items. Cut, they cut out Overall, this is a nice building and should be here for a long a, time to come. Brush and Most isolated communities are waiting to get their own indoor arena. Construction on this place started around September of 87. So within a few months, the residents of Sachs will enjoy skating indoors and that's a change from having to skate outside. That's been something that uh, we've argued for, for a long time, and um, with a lot of the, the good arguments, I guess, or, or bad, depending on what side of the fence you were on, uh, we managed to get that pulled up in the five-year capital plan um, to construction this year. I think it would have still been about three years from now, but a lot of constant nagging and uh, a lot of good, solid argument as to why we needed a facility like that. Um, finally came through and uh, I know that it's going to get a tremendous amount of use. Hockey for the young and old plays a big part in community recreation. So a lot of people will enjoy having this arena. The Satu area. Meetings like this economic development meeting takes place in all communities whether to discuss proposals, iron out things or any topic in mind. Communities need this kind of communication to help their community grow. And most times, they get new ideas or something useful to the people. Now we have the facility. Development will probably be a big part in most Western Arctic hamlets, and people look forward to the future of their community. In politics, was very detailed. It's safe for the local hotel in town. They'll say, okay, attach onto it, say, another tourist facility out in the Hornaday River or something. Uh, for yourself, you're a hotel operator, identifying opportunities off or away from the hotel but connected to it would certainly help you because the planner would be doing a lot of the footwork that you would have to do otherwise. This equipment is on for most of the day when the employees are using them or fixing them. Sometimes days are long, but the job gets done. Listening to a bit of music helps. There are always things to do here or there, like maintaining the equipment, cleaning, hauling gravel, roads, etc. People might use the garage for welding something on a skidoo or fixing broken parts. It is convenient, especially when it is very cold outside.
Glenn Gordon is one of two police officers living in Saks. He is a native special constable and has been working in Saks for the past year. He likes working there and says it is a nice place to hunt when he gets a chance. Apart from his regular duties, he uses his free time by helping people or people help him. It is a job that keeps him occupied most of the time. People come into the office to renew their licenses or talk things over with Glenn, whether it be official or talking of hunting trips that happened. Although he likes Saks, he might be transferred to another place within the year. RCMP Saks, ever? If you need a lawyer, just, uh, we have a list here. If you need some help to get one, just come on into the office. And there are a lot of similarities between Western Arctic communities. Land, people, animals, lifestyle, etc. People enjoy visiting other places to see friends and make new ones. What's the problem? Saks also holds their annual White Fox Jamboree around the first part of May. It's a gathering of people, like most jamborees, and they are there to meet friends and have fun. Charters bring the people in from other communities, and sometimes the weather is not all that good for flying. So some people never make it. For the people that make it, it is a good way to make friends and see the community as it is. How did it feel being way ahead of the other guys? It felt really, really good all the way. Almost halfway through, I was ahead, and then, of course, my dogs had to stop for a while when they hit the big iceberg just out there. And even then, I didn't give up. <laughs> In the end, Rita's dogs and my dogs got tangled up together, and we came all the way like that until we got untangled about three quarters of the way. Um, do you have anything else to add? Uh, not really, other than uh, perhaps we would like to see uh, possibly more, uh, more visits and more people from uh, not only uh, you know, the other communities, but from um, some of the other organizations. And uh, you know, it's good that uh, the Communication Society, I guess, is, uh, is willing to come up here and, and give a little bit of uh, our side of the story from our side of the ocean as to what's going on in this community to give some of the friends and family on the mainland, uh, just an idea of what we're up to. Okay.